Uh, thanks for having me. I'm uh, really excited to be here. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about um, Rakuten data platform evolution and our challenges and how we plan to address that. So my name is Lei, and my family name is uh, I, which write as AI. So thanks for those experts Prize me. I have a very bright future. <laughs> thanks. Um, so today, uh, I will firstly introduce, uh, introduce my uh, um, company and then um, l highlight our challenges, problems. Uh, uh, later, I can quickly go through uh, which kind of solutions we are going to apply for to address those problems. So uh, about Rakuten, I'm not sure whether uh, we have other studying about this uh, company or not. So basically, we announced that we are the first uh, the largest e-commerce company in Japan. Um, but actually not in, also in, only in Japan. We have uh, services across uh, 30 countries. Um, we have about 1 billion users. Uh, and we providing up services um, uh, more than 70s. Uh, so if we are in the United States, we have a service uh, called eBates, which is part of Rectum right now. Uh, we also have Wiki, which kind of a streaming service, uh, similar with functionality with uh, Netflix also. Um, in Europe, we have uh, a Viber, a Rectum TV. Uh, yeah, Japan, Taiwan, I'm sure we have uh, the major users are also uh, for e-commerce platform. So besides e-commerce, uh, company also have uh, uh, also become the, will become the um, five gigabyte network operator in Japan. Uh, and uh, also we have uh, finance services. We have bank and uh, insurance. So this is about uh, our department and mission. So currently we are responsible for building that platform for uh, Japan e-commerce data processing. So um, basically, we have uh, about um, around uh, several hundreds of TB data for only transaction data. Um, we are serving about more than 6,000 users across the company. Um, so for the BI purpose usage, we are also providing like uh, various tools like Domo, Tableau, MicroStrategy, um, and uh, Teradata. Presto, the Skydo tools. So our, uh, our data is carrying about more than 90 services, uh, including those sub-services. Sub uh, so each day we are running about um, almost 1,000 of uh, jobs um, for data lighting, data processing, this kind of stuff. So I would like to talk a little bit about uh, the, our data platform evolution. So about one decade ago, uh, Rakuten decided to launch its data platform to become more data driven. So the first version of the data platform is a pure based on data warehouse concept that was um, based on Teradata technology. So later, the second version comes out in 2030. Um, we decide to expand the ex uh, territory into a uh, data lake concept. So at that time, we have uh, both Teradata and uh, Hadoop HDFS enabled. Now, um, it's becoming more and more data. We have more and more data coming into our platform. So we have multiple Hadoop clusters in different data center. And also, because the local computing resources are limited, it's very hard to scale up. So we also um, add some uh, public cloud uh, functionalities, so which currently we use uh, uh, GC GCS for storage. Uh, this is about the, the existing, how to say, the, the old architecture of the platform. So we can see uh, it's kind of a stone age architecture. So the, we have data source 
for sure. We have a various sort of like um, relational database, files, uh, APIs, and uh, events messages. So part of the data source, we're landing into Teradata with um, Informatica solutions, uh, which is a part center, basically. Um, and uh, also, there are some pipelines we landing, uh, we use some home brew um, solution we call OD, which is a Python uh, um, framework. We copy those data into Hadoop system. And uh, time to time, we need to synchronize from Teradata to Hadoop, and also copy da some data from uh, Hadoop into Teradata. So up to users, you uh, uh, have it, because some users, they prefer to use Teradata. So we need to replicate data from Hadoop to Teradata. But some users, they want to use uh, Hadoop more, so we need to uh, replicate from Hadoop to, to uh, Teradata to Hadoop, sorry. And yeah, so, so in terms of the consumption, uh, we, the major tools currently we use uh, is uh, Hadoop, Hive, and also we have a, a press cluster serving that purpose. So this kind of data pipeline is uh, ba basically based on batch. So time to time, we always have complaint about data uh, quality issues, data freshness issues, uh, data ACL issues, those kind of problems. So that's a, that's, a, that's a challenge of the current platform. So the first one is, uh, of, of course, about the data replication challenges. We can see we have uh, too many storages. We have too many tasks to maintain each day. And uh, so basically, the alcohol people, they cannot sleep each night. They always have some alerts that like some job fail, and you need to manually recover that. For consumption side, um, uh, we have different, uh, because the data is scattered everywhere, if you want to query some data, you always need to do some manual job to replicate data. And performance is not good as well, because the uh, Hadoop cluster is not designed very well for scale up, so the cluster is always fully occupied from the resources. Um, I already talked about that freshness. Um, and also, the downstream application is fully covered with source, which means uh, we don't have a proper abstract layer. So each time something changes from the source, you have to change the application in the user side, which is already very annoying from user perspective. So now we think about why we work together to make this that platform great again. So uh, we have those following considerations. So first one is uh, uh, we want to have some unified data, data pipeline to unify those data pipeline uh, jobs. So we, we don't want to have a lot of uh, jobs running in one scheduling system or the other jobs scheduling by other system. So firstly, let's unify these tasks. And then um, we need some uh, total solution for data replication. So we don't want to, each time, we, uh, add a small job to copy some data from somewhere to and other places. And also for consumption layer, we want to have a common layer for consumption and also abstraction. Um, in terms of the performance, for sure, we need some kind of catch to accelerate that. So talk about the modern technology like a CDC based pipeline, we want to have that as well, so that we can have a real time, near real time data uh, reflecting our storage. Uh, to address the scalability issue, we want to uh, integrate with public, public cloud. And uh, finally, uh, also we need some uh, proper abstraction to decouple the downstream, downstream dependencies. So that's a high level vision of our uh, next objectives. We still have different uh, sources, and uh, we, those data are still in different uh, storage and data center for sure. We cannot change that very easily. But what we can do is we can have a common layer for data orchestration 
which is allows you. So if we can take a look at those considerations, we can see that more than half of the consideration should be covered, able to cover by LOCO data orchestration. So that's why we come up with this common layer for, for that. Okay. So this one is about our um, new platform high-level architecture overview. <clears throat> so we target to provide uh, three major services. The first major service is uh, discover, data discovery service. Uh, this one is uh, designed to provide uh, mostly for the data governance purposes. Uh, a couple of components there. The first one is about uh, schema management. So for all sources, we need to register the data schema there so that we can manage the schema evolution and also lineage and those kind of stuff. So basically, this uh, function is based on Apache Atlas. Uh, we do some abstraction and uh, wrapper on top of that. Also, we um, need to provide proper data access control. So now we know that uh, data regulation is becoming more and more strict. People um, in different country, region have different rules, regulations. So um, we must meet the requirements. At least we need to implement the row level access control or column level access control kind of stuff. So this component is specific for that. In terms of the column level access control, we leverage uh, Apache Ranger for that. And we develop a couple of plugins in order to, to do that. Classification, that part is for user to classify their data so that, for example, a user at the department, they have uh, 100 tables, they have some columns, but some of the data they do not want to share to other people, so they just mark that columns not shared. Um, we have different policies for that, so they can decide uh, which kind of group they want to share. And auditing, uh, of course, is very averse. Like, uh, when, you share, sorry. when you share your data, uh, you always need to do some proper um, audit each time. Like, uh, you want to know real time which user is accessing my data, which kind of data they're using, how much, how much resources um, they're using so that we can design the proper pricing model based on that. Mm. So pipeline service is uh, straightforward. It's kind of providing like a near real time data streaming from source to um, our storage. And consumption service is target to provide different uh, consumption tools for users to use. Oh, sorry, thank you. So um, we can have like a Spark and a Presto and notebooks and uh, other, other BI tools integrated there. Uh, in, in the storage uh, part, so we still put Hadoop as a major storage. Inside Hadoop, we all have three different tiers. So first tier is about letting zoom, uh, which is just a snapshot of the source. After we landing those data, we have a common schema mapping layer, a tier which is targeted to, to, to have a common regulation for the column names, descriptions, so that user can easily understand which column are they, which kind of category those columns belong to. Finally, we have uh, the common marks tier. This tier uh, is just to uh, draw different tables to proper transformations so that those kind of mark is shared by different business units to create data. For example, always the, for example, one one example is uh, the transaction data. So that's a very good example for, uh, for a mark. You don't want to understand uh, which kind of purchase behavior happens each day so they can use that as a one common mark. And beside, uh, inside this platform, we're using a data architecture layer, which is a LOC solution. Uh, for both storage side and also consumption side. So <clears throat> we have three steps to implement this project. 
uh, typically we, because this uh, one is a, a very complex project, it costs a lot of time, but today we are going to focus on the uh solution only, uh, so about this layer. So in order to do this, we have three steps. So first uh, case, which we already implemented in our GCP environment, product environment. So it is uh, based on um, Mesos DCOS solution. We deployed the Presto cluster with Alloxio together, um, which is based on pure memory catch. And uh, we, because uh, previously we didn't provide the Presto in GCS, so we cannot compare the old performance and new performance. So we just uh, run those kind of tests by ourselves. So we sampled one day, uh, one, uh, one hour of our Ola streaming data and uh, run those queries, aggregation queries. The purpose of this testing is that those queries are CPU sensitive and CPU heavy queries, which allows you don't have uh, too much advantage. So we want to run those queries to see even under this kind of situation, whether LOC can perform very well or not. And it turns out that LOC has a better performance. Even under this kind of query, also have, can improve around 30% of the query time improvement. So we look e deeper into that, those queries. Um, we check Presto loading stages. We know that Presto have a different stages. So the first uh, stage is about source loading. That part, we see the difference come from that part. So that means um, even if we repeatedly run those queries, and uh, in that case, GCP will have catch from GCP level, of course. But even in that kind of case, um, Alloxio will still have better perform data loading performance uh, compared with the pure G GCP. So this one was a very, a very successful case for us. So moving on, we will have uh, the second use case based on our uh, understanding for uh, Alloxio, which is to, um, to join the different uh, Hadoop cluster in different uh, data center and uh, provide the server, uh, a consumption service for Presto cluster. So this will be in our local data center. In order to save uh, computing resources, we decided to deploy a Lucio cluster together with the Presto cluster, or sandbox. So those catch will be happening in the uh, SSD storage level, not in memory level, in order to avoid the memory consumption c competing with uh, Presto. So finally, if this case also succeeds, finally we will uh, have the core data orchestration layer implement in Recton. That is, uh, there will be two parts. The first part about uh, LOC ingest. So our uh, LOC expert just explained about the other store replication. So this component can re resolve the problem for a file replication to different uh, uh, data center, different uh, Hadoop clusters, uh, seamlessly and uh, transparently. Do not worry about those task failure and those kind of stuff. And after we have uh, data replicated properly into different cluster, we can also have different uh, LOC cluster for catch only. So this, this uh, LOC cluster will serve for consumption purpose only. So we can replicate those data into different catch cluster and uh, serve for high Presto and Spark use cases. Okay. Basically, that's all from my side. Thanks. So if you have any questions.